Hello, this is National Master Spencer Feingold back at the Chess Club Ens Classic Center of Atlanta with another Endgames class. Today we're going to be looking at some past pawns in Endgames. Well, this first one is you know, between an Endgame and a Middle Game, I suppose. But, uh, too bad, you're gonna have to bear with me about that. <laughs> but pretty close to an Endgame, and we'll see how the Endgame wraps up. Alright, so here we have a game from Polgar. Sophia Polgar. The third most famous of the Polgar sisters against Palotnik. 1989. Rome? Rome. Yes. yes. Rome, 1989. You only knew that because you've been there so recently. That's right. <laughs> so, Polgar has white here, but it's black to play. She just recaptured the rook on d1. So, uh, who's better? Fair guess. Well, white has more space. Yeah. Black's kind of cramped. That's absolutely true. However, black has a past pawn. An pawn. extra past pawn. Black's up a pawn. Yeah. Right here, extra protected past pawn. It's about as far back as a past pawn could be, really. But it still exists. However, she does have pretty serious compensation. And I think most people would really like to have white here. They like to have a lot of space and attacking the king potential um, and not defending. Though also the b6 pawn is hanging. Put this on a computer, it actually prefers black. Yeah, tough, tough position. And white has sort of a threat here. Yes. Bishop f8? Always play that. Yes, bishop f8 is the idea. Threatening mate and discovered attacking the queen. And so that's why Polotnik prevented this with his next move. Which was? Rook g8. Rook g8. Absolutely. That's what he did. And then bishop f8 you just take with the queen. Saving your queen and, well anyways, mate's not even threatened so with rook g8. However, he doesn't even have to do that. For example, king g8, computer recommendation. Bishop f8, always do that. And just give up the queen. Yeah, it's not so bad for black to play this position. Although I wouldn't be sure about it. Rook knight and pawn is generally equal to a queen, but it might be that the queen has some immediate threats. Just doesn't really. You know, it's not that big a deal. Again, computer likes black here. Yeah, so it's not so such a big threat, just for the record. But you'd want to stop it, because you don't let your opponent do that, right? Rick g8, not a horrible move. And uh, rook lift. Going on over to h3, right? And mate. If only it was that easy. Free pawn. Now he's up two pawns, two connected past pawns. But uh, Polgar plays a really strong idea here. Puts a lot of pressure on Black with her next move. What's it going to be? E6, a crowd likes that one. That's what I was looking Definitely. for. Definitely. Absolutely. With several threats, right? Threatening to just play E takes F7. It looks good. And also E6 clears the way for Bishop E5. Check. Winning the queen and mating the king. So, now it's tough for black, although black's fine here with the best move. There's only one move to survive. What's it going to be? Not, a, not an easy one at all. In fact, Polotnik didn't find the correct response. Or maybe he did, but didn't analyze it correctly. Didn't play it. I hate whenever like you read a book and it's like, and now they missed the right move. They probably saw it. They just thought it would, didn't work for some reason, you know? Or maybe they missed it. 
A question or comment? No, I have an answer. Oh, okay. So I'm guessing he played F6, but then knight D5 is better. Well, never play F6, so no matter what, you would think that it's wrong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you're absolutely right. Oh, do you have it? Is that what you're gonna say, or? Well, what's the variation? Knight D5. E takes. E takes F7. Then Queen takes D6. Sacking the exchange? Always sack the exchange. Does look okay, right? Yeah. Yeah, knight d5, e takes f7, queen d6, f takes g8 equals rook, check. King takes rook on g8. Yeah, sack the exchange, but doesn't look bad at all for black. Black's got threats, too. Knight f4 check, two connected pass pawns. Knight on d5 is amazing, and there's no threat against the king. Can you show us how that? No! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here, the right move. Okay. And if takes here, take this, take that. Oh, I made a queen, but, you know, I said rook. And then this. And, yeah, everything I said was true. The knight's great. It's threatening this. Uh, what else did I say? Yeah, two connected passers. And this king is just safe. Really safe king. Compared to, well, how the game went. So I don't think he would have been too worried about this variation. Right. We'll look at f6, blunder. But here, what about another move? Rook h3. I'm probably going to play rook g7, I would guess. here. Yeah, e7. Well, if you take with the knight, that's not great, right? Yeah, because of bishop e5. It's a deflection, exactly. Bishop e5, we deflected the knight away from f6, so you can't play f6. So bishop e5 is going to be threatening mate on h7 also, by the way. And, uh, not great. You don't have to take, though. You can just move it. Queen e8, x clam. In which case, it's not clear how white can make progress. You know, bishop e5 doesn't get it done anymore. f6 is fine. You can't make, can't do anything more over here. You can't even make a pawn break anywhere. In fact, the only move is to play rook b3. It's the only move that doesn't lose, actually. Followed by rook a3. So we can get into the 7th rank and keep some counterplay up. Still a complicated position. You wouldn't really know during a game what's going on. Computer says equal. <laughs> Zero. But still really messy. Anything could have happened from here. White could win by a blunder. Or black could win if the pawns get out of hand. So knight d5 is the right defense. We saw even e takes f7 as well as rook h3. Neither of them break the bank. But you have to calculate those variations accurately. That's why I think that, you know, he perhaps did see knight d5, but didn't analyze one of those two moves correctly, and instead went for never play f6. Alright, the next move's pretty obvious. Poke the queen. And then? Not only one winning move here, but it's only one move you'd play. Really. What do you guys think? White to play. Any candidates? Bishop C7? Yeah. Bishop C7. I was thinking Bishop C5. Bishop, I was going to say, Bishop C5 is like Bishop C7's stronger cousin, right? Mm -hmm. Similar move, but... Yeah, keeps the pawn protected, and those totally viable moves. But, uh... Try to be a little stronger than that. <laughs> you know, this is all about our past pawn. The whole lecture is. <laughs> it's too easy for you, though. Still that rook h3 idea? Rook h3? And then rook g7? Resigns. Queen f8, so that. And just. Now he's talking. Yeah, yeah queen f8. <laughs> a forcing move. Always play queen f8. Is that how it goes? 
Yes, it threatens on f6. And capturing would not be advisable, you'd be down a rook. So, great move, not the only winning move, like I said, bishop c5 is also fine, maybe even bishop c7, but I think bishop c5 is more normal there. And uh, so the defense was knight d5, good try. Defending the f-pawn, right? Again, not only one way to go, but definitely the most logical play here by Sophia. Rook takes Yeah, just take it off, right? Absolutely. So here, because you can't take this now, it's mate. Here, it has to go there. Back. Now queen f6 to f8 is the right way, but I didn't, you know, I just played here. <laughs> you don't have to repeat again. I have a question. Yes. I don't know the answer to my question. So okay. Gonna, hopefully give me the answer. I don't Instead know. of knight d5. Oh, yes. I didn't look at another move. Knight d7. And then I need an answer. All right, I can figure it out. Good, because I can't. Okay, mm. I figured it out. <laughs> uh, do you just trade queens and move you, your bishop? Yes, you trade queens and retreat your bishop yes. on the diagonal. Pretty good, a pretty good stuff. Because then the knight's yeah, hanging sure, here and rook d8. Yeah. And then a3 probably. Yeah, that's what I thought, yeah. Yeah, that's funny, yeah. you can't. Seems like you should be able to do something, but you can't. Yeah. Yeah, then Rook's coming to d8, that's not good. Alright, you'd just be losing your knight, I guess. The best was like King g8 yeah, or something. Yeah, that's not good. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that is important. I didn't notice knight d7 is a viable defense. So queen f8 is a really good move, mm -hmm. honestly. And I mean, the tough part here is winning a bishop up, but not too tough for her. Although I'm sure she... Took her time about it. Because you get the wrong color, the right color. Right. One, so that's good. Yeah, that is definitely helping. Yeah. I mean, having three isolated pawns, usually not very easy to, and none doubled even. I mean, none passed rather, is uh, kind of tough to to win with. But we can admire her technique. I don't think I gave many notes to this. Trying to trade the pawns off, right? Yeah, she doesn't mind if he plays g takes f4 and gets tripled. Yeah, and basically you win by Zugzwang. Because your bishop can move back and forth, so you get to a position where they can't do that. I don't really know if king h5 to g4 was the best defense, but... Yeah. And then he resigned here after bishop e7. Take a look at the variation. Just an example of what could have happened here there. Now it's already sort of Zugzwan. You have to push your F-pawn. Unless you want to, like, trade the two pawns for one, like, go here or something and take, take for this. But then I'll be in time with H4. Or you could take the H-pawn. I'll be in time with F4. But yeah, even if you go here, just bishop E7. Again, you have to give up some ground here. Like this. I thought I might as well try to take some pawns, but it's not quite working in time to defend it. And see, yeah, there's no reason to look at this anymore. You could win this so easily. But okay, the game could end in any kind of way. It's just, you're gonna get Zook's long to lose your pawns, so he resigned. So really nice game there. Black was okay, but it was really difficult to handle that pass pawn on e7. You know, once it got down there. Yeah, f6 was absolutely wrong, knight d5. Had to calculate this move better. It's the only way to defend. I don't know if uh, Polgar would have played all the right moves here. You have to play this, and then you have to play rook b3 here. It's the only move to not lose. Because what else are you going to do? Yeah, tough variation. Weird position. That's how it goes, you know, with pass pawns. They're very valuable. Who would have thought? But okay, let's go on to the next one, huh? We'll never save. Yeah, short against Belyovsky. And uh, I mean, every week Belyovsky loses in this room. Not in this game. Oh, okay. Shockingly, yeah. he does not lose this game right. with black. Here, Belyovsky, it's black's turn, he plays h5. And Belyovsky is uh, in a bad way, really. Especially after Nigel's next move, which is pretty obvious to any demolitions expert. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
<laughs> right? Oh, C4. Yeah, so people, some people got that. <laughs> yeah. C4. He's making a pass pawn, whether you take it or not, which he does on Passat. If you don't know about that rule, come in on Sunday. I'll teach you all about on Passat. And yeah, I mean, imagine White losing this would be, uh, I mean, you'd have to have a pretty vivid imagination, really. It's equal material, but White's clearly better or winning. Let's see, made some moves there. This one, moved his king up. That's what you do in the end game. Yeah, then he played a kind of a passive move here, knight g7. Sort of, uh, I don't know. I don't know exact. I don't know exactly why he played it, honestly. Well, but he probably wants to trade knights. On f5? And he, yeah, and then if he can sack his bishop for the b-pawn, that's the wrong colored h-pawn. Ah, draw. Well, that's, he's hoping to draw here, yeah. Yeah, I thought knight f4. It's more normal. Yeah. Definitely. I give this variation. It's probably not even losing. Like this. Bishop's attack, get the pass pawn going, right? But yeah, you've got three against two on the king side. So let's make a pass pawn over here with g4 and so on, if possible. Which doesn't look too possible. But again, we're trying to just trade off all the pawns. Right? If you can trade off all the pawns and sack the bishop or knight for the b-pawn, you can draw two minor pieces against one. Take it. In fact, probably you shouldn't push here. You could like just keep playing, doing random stuff. I don't know, king d4 maybe? That's hard to push the pawn. So I thought, okay, let's look at this. But yeah, you could take and, and play g4 here. This is just like forcing the pawns off the board here. H3. Mission accomplished. Mission accomplished. Definitely getting all the pawns off and it should be a draw. Two minor pieces against one. Although I'd play for 50 moves, of course. Just because, you know, got to play. What else am I going to do? Play, vi play video games? Oh, yes? Instead of b5, then, can you play knight c4? Oh, uh, preparing it. Yeah. Seems a pretty reasonable move. Yeah, but then I could get in... g4 anyway? Yeah, yeah g4 anyway, right? That's yeah. what I was calculating. Knight c4 might be a good try, because there's a fork. You know? Mm -hmm. So that is an interesting move. Maybe even the I'm best I'm not move. worried about that fork, because my bishop's defended. Oh, I forgot. Yeah, and I have g5 for my king to go yeah, so g4, g4 would be the move in response, yeah. Yeah, knight c4, g4. No, you could still play, right, you shouldn't play b5, you should just play a move and keep try to keep the game going. But it should be a draw if you can't break break down b5, right? How are you going to win with your pass pawn then? So yeah, he didn't need to do anything uh, too unusual, actually, to hold the position, because that's all pretty normal stuff. Instead, he backed it up. And now he should be even probably losing. I mean, definitely losing. Comes the check. Just moved his king up. Yeah. And then uh, here. Because he can't let the... Obviously, he can't let the opposing king in, right? But he's so passive now. Like this. Yeah. Bishop f5, fine doesn't need to do that. You could play b4 or something. You shouldn't mind the capture. But now Short actually throws it away here for just a move. Belioski does not capitalize, actually. They love to repeat, so they just like we're repeating here for a minute. Bishop e4. Not right. And Belioski returns the favor with bishop d7. Classic, right? He actually should take. It's like super risky to do this. In a knight endgame, where the guy has this outside pass pawn, probably both sides didn't even analyze this much. They thought this generally is going to lose. But we can actually... There's, there's some things in our favor, tactically speaking. For one, king g6 comes with a tempo. They're threatening a fork, which is really nice. Also, if you keep your king here, then and I push the pawn, I can't go here. Because there's this fork. So I played it out a little bit with the engine, and I wasn't winning. I thought maybe I could still win because I got an outside pass pawn. You know, he comes to check, push the pawn, 
Like I said, I can't push it here because he'll fork me on D6. So I can stop the fork. Then he can go like this to stop my pawn. And I played it out even more. I thought this could still be a win, you know? Outside pass pawn's really good. But Black's making a pass pawn pretty quickly as well with his pawn majority. Check out that pawn majority's lecture if you're watching at home. <laughs> Should definitely be able to find that one. Yeah, I played it out a little more. Here we go. Don't even have to play g4 right now, but it just seemed like the most normal thing. Yeah, just snap it off, right? Well, even now, I think it's kind of tough to draw for white. You know, it's kind of tough for white to draw this. I would think. You could just check and take the f-pawn and draw. Hmm, I guess you're in time, right? Ooh. You have to go to f1. Yeah. Yeah, you could do that. Yeah, white's not better. Either. White cannot win, no way. Yeah. Oh, right, that would be an easy way to draw. Yeah, or you can go to knight e3, then g2. Mm-hmm. And then take the h -pass. Oh, that's true. Yeah, white's got to find a way to just mm -hmm. trade the pawns off. Exactly right. He can't really try to win at all. Like that. Good arrows there. So yeah, white's got to find the way to draw, and it's one of those two. I guess you don't even have to do that. You could just do nothing and draw, but you might as well force the draw. Definitely. So yeah, somehow this knight endgame is actually playable for black, even though it looks pretty bad. And both sides probably assumed it was losing, or maybe it was just worse than this endgame, and they didn't know if this endgame was a win or not. You know? Possible. But either way... Black avoided it, but then he didn't uh, repeat here with bishop e4. He finally did defend it, the g-pawn the other way with knight e3. He's back on the winning track. Yeah. So if anything, never repeat. <laughs> Pushes. Yeah. Here. Yeah, it looks like shorts just... Uh, on his way to win, right? He's gonna play b5, and black's passive. Black can't make a pass pawn. He can't even do anything, right? Can't go here, can't go there. He's got nothing going on. Push it. Here. Never play f6. So what's the right response here? King e6. King e6 is risky. <sighs> Don't tell Nigel that. It's very risky. The worst legal move on the board. That's correct. That's why it's risky. That's why he played it. Yeah, he, he forgot, he, he forgot <sighs> always retreat. Yes. <laughs> yeah, he played king e6. Yeah. And then? The truth hurts. That's why. Goodbye, pawn. Goodbye, pawn. Dang, Nigel still would have beat you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Even after playing the worst legal move ever yeah, possible. Ever, ever scratch. <laughs> yes. Well, you guys are serious over here? Come on. Yeah. Really? Oh, Bishop C8. Bishop C8, checkmate. Bam. Yeah. And black won. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The whole audience is aghast. <laughs> checkmate. Nigel hung mate in one. I didn't see it. Nobody saw it. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, yeah, you saw it? Yeah. You saw mate in one? I figured you might. Yeah. Nigel didn't show this game when he lectured here at our chess center. This is uh, Nigel's unknown king walk. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it works, times it doesn't. Right. You live by the king walk, you die by yeah, the king walk. Okay. When he comes here at the end of the year, we'll ask him about, about his Belioski game. Ask him about this game. Yes. Now, he could uh, he could retreat, or he could take the f pawn. It's mm -hmm. not bad. He obviously didn't really want to do that because his g pawn's hanging. You know? But this should be an easy win. Like, uh, defending your h-pawn. You don't even have to do it yet, right? Because the, the other pawn's too strong. Yeah. A little poke. Yeah, bishop f5. This is nice. I like the bishop on f5. You can't make a pass pawn. And you would just gradually win this. Without too much trouble. Really. And black can't even make a progressive move here, really. 
can't go here and this doesn't help. So you know, you, you would just win this pretty easily, but instead he walked his king into mate. How sad for him. Really big blunder. Should have been an easy pass pawn win. Dang. And when Belyovsky wins. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, see, that's the only time I've shown a Belyovsky win. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, it would have been a great game. Although there was a little blip in the middle with the bishop. You know, he could have exchanged it. But he wouldn't really count on the night end game to draw there. But Belyovsky said I was playing for the win. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's why uh, yeah. he didn't exchange and go into the draw end game. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> Even I didn't make that show because I already made it like a week ago. That's true, that's true. All right, let's go to the, the last one, huh? Very famous game here for any student of chess history. It's uh, Leko against Kramnik from their 2004 World Championship match where uh, Kramnik won by tying the match. Classic Kramnik. Mm -hmm. Leko yeah. would be proud. Leko's still angry about it to this day. Yeah. Not even joking. He like I saw him like uh, you know commentate on some tournament, and he's like, yeah, I remember when I played Kramnik, but there are these stupid rules, and I tied the match, but I lost <laughs> the match even though I tied it. It was really stupid, and he, he's right. <laughs> he's right. Uh, but yeah, he uh, he did he did win this game. This was even I think the first decisive game of the match. And they're already in an endgame right from the opening, straight from opening to endgame. They're like on move 26 here. And as you might imagine, this position should be a draw, like a technical draw, with absolute perfect play. In fact, this position, I mean, the last move Black played is obviously he took it. And there's a similar game, uh, Kasparov against Anand, where it was like the same end position almost exactly, if not exactly the same position. And Anon did not take the knight and double the pawns in this way to um, create the structure. And he, instead he kept the bishop pair, and he did hold the draw. Unless Kasparov held the draw, but I think it was Anon was worse and held the draw. Now, Kramnik certainly knew that game, right? I mean, come on. And so he, he took, and I'm sure he was confident, to, in knowing that this position should be a draw as well. Maybe even an easier way to draw. Um, well, there's been a lot of analysis of this game. It was in, like, Informant, and uh, Informant said it was dubious, actually, his capture, even though Kramnik knows more than whoever gave it a dubious mark. So it's kind of weird. So I don't know exactly. Let's, let's go on through it a bit. Bishop d8, always retreat. Rook there. Looks good. Here, bishop f6, and king g2. This is actually the first new move of the game. There was a game in 2002 where the guy played rook b5 and uh, ended up, it was a draw, but the people I never heard of. So, not a great example. Krupa was black, I don't know who that is. King g2, g6. Yeah, if this was like, uh, you know, in the chess club and it was two 1500s, they'd agree to a draw already. Seriously. People are never playing out, like, when they're barely better. It's like they don't know all of Laco's wins. Yeah. Good stuff so far, right? Oof. She's boring. On. Here we go. Rook b3. Easy likes bishop f6. Rook b8. Always play bishop f8. Yep. Yeah. So that is the threat. Yeah. So h5. He oh. saw that one coming. Oh. I'm sure that Leiko is happy to like make the guy play h5, right? Because uh, at least you had to move a pawn. Haha. -ha. You know. And back. There. Attacks that, then bishop back to f6. Finally, the guy actually does something here. e4. Gotta do something eventually, huh? And e5. 
So he pushes Epon, but how is he going to make progress now, right? His majority's doubled, so it's not like he can play g4, f5, e6, and then it's a passed pawn. You know, he can't do it. It won't move like a knight. And, um, well, you know, most people know that, imagine the, if the bishops were gone, rook and three against rook and four where they're all on the same side is the textbook draw. And this is the perfect setup, too, to draw that. I've mentioned this many times in my endgame lectures. This is the right setup to go for when you're trying to draw that. But, yeah, even with the pawns doubled, it's harder to win, even. Okay, still bishops are on the board. So what is white's plan? How could white even try to do anything? What do you guys think? How would you come up with a plan here for white? Could you try to like smother the bishop by moving your king to like g3 and then like getting the rook on the seventh? D, yeah, d7 somehow. What if I play bishop a3 or bishop f8? I guess you could try to play e6, huh? Oh, you had an idea? Since this is a pass pawn lecture, I guess right, you sure rook e7 or e6. <laughs> yeah, this was looking at. It's a pretty good idea. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, rook b7, he might not like move the bishop then. True. He'd probably play king f8. I would guess that even happened. Yeah. Okay, check. But okay, that wasn't the plan. That was a threat and I moved it. <laughs> you know, I defended it rather. But what's the plan? What is he gonna, you know, how's he gonna make any progress? Karnak's not just gonna let you play e6, is he? Hopefully. Oh, cool. I was thinking maybe you sacrifice one of your doubled pawns just to ruin his structure. F5? Yeah. And, uh, yeah, he would take it. Definitely. But that, still, he didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he didn't. How did that help? Ruined your structure, but what are you gonna do? Are you gonna take a pawn? Are you gonna make a pass pawn? What do you, you know? What's the idea? Anybody can just give up a pawn. <laughs> That's not much of a much of a plan, you know. <coughs> Nobody? Well, I'll tell you what he did. He wants to play there. It's illegal. He's also gonna bring his bishop up. Then e6 check. That's all he's got. Bring his king up, his bishop up. Now he's going to have to play, for example, rook b7 to d7 and then bishop d4, right? That's how you get it started, but that's his plan. He wants king here, bishop there, e6 check. Rook h8 mate. <laughs> well, maybe he'll play f6, but then we have a pass pawn, right? e6 check, f6, passed e pawn. We made progress. Might not win even there, but... We'll have, definitely have winning chances if we can make a pass pawn. This is what he has to go for. This is the only plan, really. You can't really do anything else. You can't really attempt much without Black's help. Let's see how he did it. Here comes the king. Oh, yeah, he went around to d3 first of all, right? Yes. And then got phase one. Complete. Yep, Th trying to get that check going. <coughs> So here comes the check. Check. Always repeat. And then here. So he's pinning it, right? Check. Really exciting stuff here. <laughs> Waltz here. Check again, the Christoph Waltz. Now this was a great move. This is a move that's like, you can't even understand this move. I didn't. Beautiful move here. Best move. Great stuff. I hope you guys learned a lot from that. That, that prevents Bishop C5. Well, I think that's not why he played it. Actually, oh, it does. Prevent that, I guess. 
Well, he wants to play e6, but he's afraid that later the guy's going to fork you. Ooh. It's going to be fork town. So he goes for this one. He's preparing e6, also stopping bishop c5, actually. Definitely. Yeah, it's safer to put on a white square. You've got to put it on a white square. That's how you do it. Got to put it on a white square. Okay, finally, he pulled the trigger. Check. Oh. Didn't know the gun was loaded. And then after here? Mm -hmm. oh, you yeah. That's how you do it. Absolutely. Took that with check. Kept the rook attacked with the king. So that when you take here, he takes yeah, that. And off the rooks on b8, bishop d6 is good. Yes. To pull it out. If the rooks on b8 here, it would be bishop d6 indeed. Forcing the draw. Oh. No way you'd win that. Yeah, Laco's too good with that. Seriously. That's crazy stuff. I mean, especially this is like move 60. You know? <laughs> He's like grinding down Kramnik. Crazy stuff. Aww. Now, here he goes for bishop h4. Fine move. And this position is still a draw, actually. No matter what my engine says. And if you do look with an engine, it says it's like, you know, plus two and a half, plus three. It's wrong. This is a draw with best play. And, uh... Yeah, also, Laco had some nice insight into this position because he mentioned that there's a variation in the Rook B1 Grunfeld, like the main line nowadays, where that he plays with black, and they get a similar endgame where it's maybe even the exact same structure and he's down the exchange. And he knew the way to draw it was to put the bishop on this diagonal. You can actually create a fortress, which we'll see. Um, I, I gave some examples of that. But Kramnik messed it up, actually. Kramnik messed it up. Um, we'll see that it's not very easy to defend, especially if you don't know all that all those ideas. But f3, f5, check. So, sorry, I have a weird audience member here. <laughs> like, come on, king f6, and here. Yeah, and this is it. This was the way. Uh, Shouldn't even win here after the best defense. But it's going to be difficult to understand, so I'll just tell you. He played bishop g3, a normal looking move. Had to actually go for bishop e1. Trying to go all the way around. Even here. I, mean, I assume you're going to check me back and move my king back. But if we can get this position with the bishop on f6 and my king on, you know, f7, for example. It's going to be a fortress. I'll show you. Check. Here, trying to play rook c7, check, king f6. So you have to go like this. Here. Check. And that's it. We did it, actually. Well, you don't have to play rook a6, right? But if you don't, then I will go here, and I'll try to go there. And if you move your rook away, try to do some fancy stuff. Rook c8 or something. Maybe rook c8 here is interesting, actually. Like, right away, to stop you. But if you can get your bishop here, it's going to be a, a fortress. You can't win this. Look, you can't even try. Watch. Jack. Looks pretty good, right? Looks like white is going to win. Now what? There's nothing. You can't even proceed. What are you going to do? I might have played some more moves. Check. Here. I wasn't even doing anything, yeah. I was just like, I guess it's nothing. <laughs> I can't do anything. There's no way to get the king in. If my king is stopping f7, my bishop stopping here. Oh. Let's do a little better arrow than that. Then, uh, you know, he's... There's no way in. It's a fortress. It's a classic fortress. There's just no way to proceed. So Kramnik didn't quite get that setup though. Played here. But now we'll see that this is able to break through. Check. And here. 
Now, Kramnik, at this point, he didn't play a good defensive move, but it's already losing, I guess. He would try to play bishop h4, generally. But maybe he saw that it was still losing. He played h4. We'll see that didn't really help out. Bishop here, trying to get to f6. But Shipov gave this great variation that I quoted here, where it's a nice zugzwang. Check this out. Check. Here. It's already almost zugzwang, right? You know, if the guy's bishop moves, we get in here, unless he goes there, in which case we win it. So we try this. Check. Here. And here it is. Just move. Zugzwang. Absolutely Zugzwang. Can't move the bishop anywhere. Even here, it's check would win it. Or here. And if you go, for example, like this, be the normal move, right? We still get checked. Bring in this. Now we do get our king in, so we broke your fortress. And now we're going to win g6 with rook b6 next. Like this. I gave it a little, kept going here, this variation. But, oh yeah, that's it. Once I take the f-pawn, I'm probably going to win. Push my f-pawn. That still would be some work, but you know, you know Leiko would win this. Yeah, really nice stuff there. Rook b8, Zugzwang. What's the king in? So yeah, Kramnik just played h4, which, um, this is, uh, it, you can't win in the exact same way, I guess, because, uh, you know, if you play king here, you, you can't play this stuff fast enough. All right, I'll take this, and I'm in time to move the pawn, maybe. So, he has to be a little bit more careful like this, but he can still get his king in. Yeah. Now if you move your king away, I'm moving my king in. And if you move your bishop away, I can check you. And my pawn won't be hanging. Unless you play bishop h2, I guess. All right, that is what he did. Still went for the check. But he, he does have this now. And resigns. Because, uh, well, well, we'll still win with rook c6, like in that other variation. For example, takes rook c6 take this, similar to what we looked at, right? Actually, even easier, I think, for Leiko. You get to keep your F-bond, but not for long, because I can go like this, and I'm threatening mate, so you have to stop the mate, but now I'm going to win your pawn, and then you're going to lose, for sure. Even if you could defend it, I can play rook g4 and take it. Or I go for a winning king and pawn yeah, again. So right. You know, like this, instead of mate, for example. Really, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Really nice game by Leiko. He pressed hard with the rook bishop and four against rook and bishop, and three, rather. Uh, but even winning when he won the exchange, which is really nice, he found the right idea, right? Put the bishop on d4, play for that e6 check. He brought his king up to, moved around randomly a little bit to wear him out, you know, with the king and, and rook checks that we saw. And then when it was the exchange up end game, which was a textbook draw, he found the, he understood the idea so deeply. Because, like he had said, he looked at defending that side. So he knew exactly what to do to defend and how to exploit it the best in the best possible way. And, uh, well, that's why he got to beat Kramnik in a world championship game. Unlike Kasparov. <laughs> had to look a little deep to Kasparov, you know. <laughs> Anyways, that's all I have for you today. If you enjoyed, please consider to leave a like and subscribe to the Chess Club and Classic Center of Atlanta's YouTube. Thanks. Bye-bye.